This week, Lab TV travels to an army research lab in Natick, Massachusetts, where a scientist is spinning very tiny fibers into a brand new type of textile. Textiles are something like you would wear on your body. When you say textile, you're talking about a fabric, such as your shirt or your pants or a scarf, that sort of thing. So when I say a textile, it's something that you can actually hold. It looks like a fabric. The fibers that Chris uses to make her fabrics are much finer than most fibers. Her fibers are called nanofibers. The nanofiber is a very tiny fiber. We're talking on the order of anywhere from 50 nanometers all the way up to 500. To make her nanofibers, Chris uses synthetic polymers. A polymer is a long chain of smaller molecules, called monomers, that are bonded together. They're also called plastics. We use a number of different polymers. One is called polyvinyl chloride, which is what your PVC pipes are made in your house. We use nylon, we use polyvinyl alcohol, we use polyacrylonitrile. nitrile, we use polycarbonate. The polymers start as pellets. Before they can become nanofibers, they have to be dissolved in a solvent. You kind of dissolve it, so if you put sugar in water and you, you don't see the crystals anymore, it goes right into solution, it looks clear. So that's what we're doing with the, the polymers. You have like little pellets, say, and then we put them into something that melts it or solubilizes it, and then we get a certain concentration of the polymer. It's still there, but you don't see it. It's just a clear liquid. Chris puts the melted polymers into her nano spider machine. Take the polymer that's in solution, you charge it with a positive charge, and then you put a negative charge up top, and when it comes off, the solution, as it's being drawn into the negative target area, the solvent evaporates off, and then you form just fibers. So now, what was pellets in the solution initially, now gets drawn as fibers. The diameter of each fiber is more than 50 times finer than a strand of spider silk. But these fibers are not neatly woven like spider webs. They look like very small little fibers and people can relate to a, a spider spinning a web. And it is actually a web, but it's not a very controlled web. You don't actually see the weave go in and out or the things crossing over. You won't see that. It'll just look very smooth and very matty. These nanomaterials are cheap, super lightweight, and have some interesting properties. Chris and her team are developing new uses for them. One of the applications that we would like to use the fibers for would be detect if your food is safe. The scientists can add antibodies to the nanofibers. The fibers have a lot of surface area, and that makes them great at trapping germs and bacteria. When you take a lot of nanofibers and put them together in a mat, now you've increased your surface area many, many fold. Much like the game of pickup sticks, if you take all the sticks, you stack them up in a cube, there's not much surface area, but if you just mess them all up and let them lay naturally, now every angle of that pickup stick is another area you can attach antibodies. Here, the antibodies were able to capture single cells of E. coli bacteria. It looks like a Brillo pad with dust settled on it, and the dust is actually a perfectly shaped bacterial cell. These nanofibers will be used to help people stay healthy, but the ideas don't stop there. Chris has all sorts of other plans for her amazing nanomaterials. I would like to see textiles that you could actually have fun with. It could make you warmer, it could make you cooler, it could allow you to have electronics. So if you're carrying your iPod, just plug it into your shirt and that sort of thing. It's just kind of thinking out of the box and that's something that we're allowed to do here as a scientist. To find out more about polymers, nanotechnology and nanomaterials, check out labtvonline.org.